Dam Cam. Now, Louise is going to show you what's going on at the Juma Dam Cam. Louise, tell me when you're there. Now there you will see two <laughs> two water monitors and those water monitors apparently are in the business of creating more water monitors. So they have been mating with great enthusiasm for much of the afternoon and Marianne you want to know uh, how long they will keep that up for. To be honest with you Marianne I couldn't possibly tell you. Um, I suspect quite strongly though that they're mating now. I'm just opening a book here to see if I can get you a little bit of information. But I suspect they're mating now. Now they are mating now. Good grief, the male seems to be drowning the female. That sounds, uh, that sounds horrid. Um, <laughs> I, I suspect that they, she will lay her eggs fairly soon. And they lay up 20 to 60 eggs, I'm reading to you now, of course, I'd love to tell you that I remembered all this, but I didn't. And the reason I wanted to look at that is that they hatch in four to six months after they laid. So that will be in the height of the summertime when they are eventually, when they are eventually hatched. So, yeah, that's quite interesting. For 20 to 60 eggs laid in a termite mound, they'll go and find a termite mound somewhere close by. They'll mate in that. They're not mate in that. She'll lay her eggs there, and four to six months later, the little ones will be born. Um, I suspect four months from now, of course, will bring, take us to, well, November or December. So, yeah, that's why they'll do it. Height of the summertime. <laughs> and Kerry, you have been watching that rather than um, anything going on here, and you say they've been <laughs> they've been mating for over. 30 minutes. This is a quite impressive, I must confess. All of the, I think most of the reptiles actually take quite a long time for their conjugal visits, as it were. And, yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. Crocodiles take ages over it. I'm not sure how long it will go on for. I suspect a couple of hours. And remember, of course, they're in the water. It's chilly. They're ectothermic in exactly the same way that those... Um, terrapins are ectothermic which means that all of the heat that they have must come from the environment which means that they are cold and so it's going to be difficult for them to move with any kind of speed and so I think every anything going on there is going to be happening very slowly and it's quite interesting there apparently the female is rising the male struggling to hold on I'm going to ask Louise how she's identifying one from the other. I don't, I don't think I'd be able to identify one from the other. Save to, because, of course, they're not equipped. I'm not assuming, uh, at least, um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, no, hang on, I'm wrong. Yes, he does have, I think he's got what we call a hemi-penis, which is a penis that splits in two at the end. And I think they do have that. Some reptiles don't, and many birds don't, of course, and they just sort of join their cloacal openings together, so it's very difficult to tell who's male and who's female. But I think Louise is probably correct there. I, of course, cannot see what's going on there. I'm having it narrated to me. I think it's wonderful that we were able to see that at the Juma Dam Pan. So keep an eye there. And uh, Louise says they now look like the Loch Ness Monster, which I think is quite amusing. <laughs> I am currently driving around the Bufflesook Dam just to see if I can see what those squirrels were alarming at, see if the other lioness isn't around here somewhere. While you are watching mating lizards.